Ting like Tesla. Geek Thoughts, Micah here. This is Think Like Tesla, where we think more clearly about technology. And that includes soldering and desoldering. Now, if you're a maker, I'm sure you can understand the need to solder, to build things. You connect them together. When you see printed circuit boards like this, all these little bits of metal on here are soldered. It's tin and lead, an alloy that's used to connect electrical components. Actually, some of the newer solders don't use lead at all. But desoldering is also important because if you really want to understand how something works, you got to be able to take it apart. And taking stuff apart is where desoldering comes in. Okay, so desoldering. There's lots of videos that have these kinds of things on it. The trick is you take a soldering iron, like the TS100 here, you heat up a joint. This thing is spring loaded. So you load it like that, you heat up the joint, and then kapow. This provides suction that pulls the solder off the board. Kind of works, sort of. It's hard to get the tip of the iron and this Teflon thing in here. It's hard to get a good seal. There's a lot of leakage. Kind of works. You can buy these on eBay for like $2. Better than nothing. The second way to desolder things is with solder wick. Now here's a typical solder wick you might get on eBay. And uh, TLDR, don't buy solder wick on eBay. It is terrible stuff. It's, it's usually counterfeit. Here, for example, Gootwick is a good name brand. Recommended by Lewis Rossman, by Jessa on iPad Rehab. So this package claims to be from the official Gootwick company in Japan, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I mean, you guys tell me. Look at the look at the color of the CP1515. Is that the right color? I'm, I'm somewhat colorblind. I'm not the best judge. But no, I also have it in good authority that the true, genuine Gutwick has little fins on the inside of the, of the reel here, like this. And the image that was in the eBay listing for this did show the, the, the fins. They probably pulled that image directly off of the official website but the product is, is no good. I'll show you that in a second here. So, one I can recommend, Chemtronic Solder Wick. This has worked very well for me. I got this off of Amazon. I got it actually off of Amazon Warehouse, so it was a, someone returned it. I got it like new, but for, for less cost. So the trick is here, this has little bits of, this is basically, copper braided but dipped in flux so let's uh let's, let's demonstrate it here so this this is an old board for an old soldering station that got dismantled this let's say we wanted to remove this chip right here now the solder wick way of doing that in these cramped quarters here underneath my camera so first of all you would cut off the old piece of solder wick, get a fresh tip on here. Now, I'm gonna use my fingers here, but you probably wanna to try to not do that. So we're gonna heat up the joint with the solder wick. And as, as the name suggests, the wicking action just pulls that solder right off of there. So can you see that? That pin is basically freestanding in there. If I could get this to happen to all eight pins, it would basically just fall out of the board and be ready to replace, ready to salvage, if that's what I'm trying to do. Works really well with, with the good stuff. Life is too short to have terrible quality solder wick. So that one's pretty good too. Sometimes there's just a tiny little trace of solder that can hold the pieces on there. But oftentimes it wicks it off so cleanly that the pieces are completely free, ready to go. 
All right, so what happens if you have terrible quality solder wick? Well, let's look at this guy. Man, if only they made the uh, solder wick having the quality of these bags they put it in. This bag has been thoroughly defeated. Okay, so here's the solder wick. 1515, 1.5 means it's 1.5 millimeters wide. It's supposed to be already soaked in flux, but let's see what happens. I mean, I can already tell here. Look at look at the end of this. If I can focus in there, it's just kind of frayed. It's kind of falling apart. It's just not a good quality copper weave. I'll put some heat on there. Well, it melted, but it's just not going into the wick. Oh, it's stuck. Yeah, look at that. Can you see? Right there. Looks like I barely affected it at all. Let me try that again. Let me cut off the tip here. All right. And the braid's already falling apart where it was cut. All right, get that on there. Kind of hear the squeak. That's a good sign that things are moving around. And again, look at that. That looks like a mess. Compare that to how cleanly the solder came off on these guys. That's just a, just a mess. So I'm pretty sure this is fake stuff. All right, so if you do end up getting fake stuff, what can you do? Well, here's another experiment. Here's one I opened up earlier. I unraveled the entire thing and I soaked it in genuine Kester 1544 RMA flux. RMA stands for mildly activated. So this is a non-corrosive flux. Um, if you leave it on, it won't completely destroy your electronics. It's the same flux that you would find in Kester 44 solder, which is my favorite solder. So it's got that going for it. But what I did, I unspooled this whole thing. I ran the flux down it, saturating it, and then I let it dry out for a couple days. So we have a flux here. Where's the camera? It has kind of a sheen to it, kind of a coating of flux on it. So when we heat this up, you're going to see that it starts bubbling and broiling. But will it work? Will it pull solder off of here? Can smell the flux, so it smells kind of piney. So, a little bit better. Let me clean off my iron here. Let's try a clean joint here that we haven't touched yet. And I'm not super impressed with it, even, even after. That one worked pretty good. Maybe being on camera a bit more will help. Okay, so yeah, if you're if you're patient with it, you can you can make this stuff work. All I have to do is unspool the whole darn thing and recode it with good flux. Okay, so I think we're in pretty good shape here. Okay, but there is a third way to remove solder. And this blew my mind when I first saw it. I was watching Mr. Carlson's lab, of which um, I'm a big fan, big supporter. And he was troubleshooting a, uh, an equalizer, and he found an IC he had to remove. And then he unveiled a tool. It was a suction tool. It was like a soldering iron a gun. And he pointed it on there. One, instead of describing it, just watch.
that part just fell right off of the board. It took him just seconds to do that. That's cool. Let's let's have some of that. The problem is the uh, nice Hakko desoldering gun costs close to three hundred dollars, right? And one thing we're all about on the Think Like Tesla channel is financial responsibility. So if this was your day-to-day -day job, if you're a professional doing this, three hundred dollars is nothing. Go get it. If you're living on a shoestring budget and you're just trying to figure out how stuff works, maybe you don't have three hundred dollars to spend on a desoldering gun. So you're gonna try to figure out how to make one work yourselves. So you can get, I've seen it for around $10, you can get a soldering gun that looks like this. So not even a gun, it's just a soldering iron, and it's got the same spring-loaded contraption that we saw earlier. But it pulls the solder through the heated tip. So when you take it apart, you see this? Oh, man, this is gross. It's all filled with, like, solder dust. I'm going to have to wash my hands really good after that. Here's the plunger. And look at all that gross solder sticking on there. So the one advantage of the uh, gun tools is that they have a little chamber that captures the, the solder and it has a filter in it. So I don't have that here yet. So I've got my pump that we talked about before. This is a vacuum pump hooked up to a line. The other end of the line goes into that soldering iron with the heated tip. So I don't want to use this too much because this is just going to pull the solder right into this line. But for a quick experiment I can try it out. Yeah, that's pretty hot down there. So let's get our sample board again. By the way, I've never tried this before going on camera just now. So let's say we want to take out this IC here. I'm going to have to manually activate the pump here by hooking it up with alligator clips. This is basically a proof of concept. Okay, so how this works is you find the joint you want to get undone, you put it on there, kind of wiggle it a bit to get it all nice and melty, you get it on there with a pretty good seal, and activate. How did that work? Let's see. Maybe not melty enough. So let's make sure. I don't know if this is lead free solder that's hard to melt. I don't know what's going on here. Let's put some regular solder on here first. This is not the best tool to do that. Let me switch tools. Right tool for the job. Clean. Okay. It's kind of a YouTube trope to complain about clearance of working underneath the camera. So I'll proceed to do that now. So again, this is something Lewis Rossman would say. If you're working with this lead-free solder, Get it off there. Work with the the leaded software is toxic. If you touch it, if you eat your sandwich without washing your hands, but it's just going to sit on a circuit board in someone's computer, in someone's soldering workstation. No biggie. Okay. Now we have some decent solder on there. Let's go back to this guy see if our proof of concept here is going to work. I might even want to do some flux on here, but we'll see. Okay, well, it's nice and melty there. Get on camera better. Okay, I'm going to push on it. We get a good seal. And how does it look? Where is my camera? It's not terrible. Now one thing that's going on here is there's a large length of the silicone tubing between the uh, iron and the pump. If that was shorter, it would probably work better. I didn't want to cut the tubing just yet until I figure out exactly how this is going to go. This 
pumped us five liters a minute, allegedly. Same as the specs on all the uh, soldering guns I can find out there. All right, so how are we doing on that? Doesn't look like it's enough to make this thing fall off the board yet, but it's promising enough for me to keep going. All right, so what could I do better? So, oh, look at that. I got some solder sucked up into the tube there. Can you see that? This is why filtering is good. I'm just going to cut off this piece of tube and throw it away. I'm pretty sure getting little bits of powdered solder into your pump would not be good for its longevity. All right, so what can we do about this? A couple things I'm thinking of. So I got these two dram containers like this. This might be good. That could fit right on there. It's a little bit short. I'd have to figure out some way to secure it. I could easily drill a hole through the lid. I'd also have to figure out how to drill a hole through this or else cut it. I've also got some borosilicate test tubes. These have a nice screw on lid. You can imagine cutting this down to the exact length where it would fit in here. And you could pop it out and change the filter. For the filter, I have some of this. This is ceramic fabric. So it's very heat resistant. It's basically what the filters in the commercial guns are made of. So what do you think? Is this project worth it? Should I keep going? Um, let me know. And if you start taking things apart and you discover new things, I want to hear about that too. Let me know in the comments. Thanks.